Apple Tunes, you can find us there. I was in radiology for a number of years, and then I went back to school to get an associate's degree in nursing from a college here in Philadelphia, Gwyneth Mercy University. I work for the Department of Veteran Affairs here in Philadelphia, which is a government job for nine and a half years on the weekend before I decided to pursue entrepreneurship full time. Give me one second. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna start with what is leadership? All of us have these different ideas of what leadership is. So when you think of leadership, what comes instantly to your mind? To whom do you relate leadership to? You might think that your boss, a matriarch or the patriarch of your family, a professor, a dean, or your new president who was just elected. So congratulations, President Marmu. And if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, I'm sorry. So I understand that she is the second woman to assume India's top office. And here in the United States, it's still early, it's five o'clock. So I assume by this time in India now that she has already taken office today. So congratulations. Okay, so let's get a little deeper. There's 10 specific steps of leadership. All leaders must know how to effectively communicate with those in her or his inner circle and also outside the circle. So leaders must discern if they have hidden agendas and discern the same in others and avoid wounding others with their words. Each leader must learn effective time management, master their scope of words in real time and gain wisdom and tips to manage their time. So let's talk about this a little bit. It's important as a leader, whether you're a leader of a country, you're a leader in school, even a leader of your own business, communication is key. It's important to make sure that what you are saying to someone or people that they are getting the message that you are talking about. So we're gonna dig a little deeper into leadership and of course, communication. So now we're going into a little further. So leaders will inevitably face conflict. There's no way to get around it. If you are a leader, there is going to be conflict in your life. The only thing you can do is be the best leader that you can be and face it head on. Some are gonna hate you just for breathing and some are gonna be jealous of what you have or have attained. Leaders must learn to decode people's issues, discover the root cause of negative conflict and resolve conflicts and hopefully turn foes into friends. Now, we would all would love for the people that don't like us, don't get along with us, have something to say to be our friends. In the real world, of course, you know that doesn't happen. But the ultimate goal is to turn your foes into friends some kind of way. Because sometimes you can be a leader and not necessarily have someone like you, but they will respect you because they believe in what it is that you are doing. So leaders must have a strong foundation of ethics and integrity in their lives and discern how to speak the truth when facing a dilemma. It's, un, it's inevitable. If you are a leader, there's going to be controversy. There's going to be many things that come up, but you have to have a strong foundation. And if you are a good leader and you believe in what it is that you're doing and what you're trying to do for your people, then you will be fine. Leaders must learn to deal with anger, discern the source of anger and alleviate and communicate their anger. There's a saying here in the States, and I'm sure you heard about it, never let them see you sweat. The reason why I say that is it's a cliche, yes, but sometimes we may not know what we're doing. We may not know what our next steps are. We may not know what we're going to say next. But what you do not do is let someone know, one, I'm nervous about what I'm talking about, two, I have no idea what I'm talking about, or three, 
I don't know what I'm doing. I always say, you know, when opportunities come, you take the opportunity and you figure it out later. So leaders must navigate and own their own mental architecture through stress management, keeping a checklist for burnout, understanding the root causes of stress and the stages and lies of stress. I want to address this because this is very important. Mental health is so important, especially if you are a woman. We as women, we do so many things. We take care of our families. We take care of our children. We work. We have businesses. We do it all. We try to be super women. But what we forget sometimes is that we need to be well. If we are not well, how can we take care of our families? So we have to maintain some type of normalcy. So whether it's through meditation, you might go to a spa, you might read a book, you might even get up earlier in your family so you have time to do the things that you need to do before you start your day. You don't want to burn out. That's the last thing you want to do, especially if you have so many balls in the air that you are juggling. So make sure as leaders, becoming leaders, that you take the time to take care of yourself first and make sure you don't burn out. There's a saying, you can't pour from an empty cup. You must pour from the overflow. Leaders must develop effective decision-making, discovering what an effective decision is and what decisions are fair to those they serve. There's gonna be lots of times in your career, especially if you are thinking about becoming a leader of any kind, where there's gonna be hard decisions. One of the hardest decisions I had to make in my business was I had to fire someone. And I had to express to the person that it was not personal against them because they were a wonderful person, but it was the work ethics that unfortunately did not work out for me and our organization. So that was a very hard decision I had to make. I felt horrible after it, but then I had to make the decision of, would I let this person stay and continue what they're doing, which wasn't good, or am I going to be fair to the organization and get someone in that could be beneficial or a better fit for our organization? So leaders have to know how to deal with the nagging anxiety that might come over the decisions they made in the past. That bothered me, it really did, because I'd like to think of myself as a good person and I'd like to give everyone the benefit of the doubt. But one thing I have learned in business, and for those of you who may one day go into business, or again, you might decide that you want to become an educator or a political figure, whatever you decide, you know, there are going to be decisions, unfortunately, that you're gonna to have to make. They're gonna to be tough decisions. You have to make them and then continue on. Unfortunately, it sounds a little cold, but it's true. So leaders must learn to remove a dead load of procrastination. Find the potholes of procrastination and stop making excuses for delaying action. Now, the woman that I told you about that I had to let go, I let her stay probably in the organization a little longer than I should have. And of course, I was getting other complaints from people about her worth ethics and different things like that. But I procrastinated because one, it was the first person that I had to fire. And two, I did not want to do it. You know, I, I just didn't want to do it. And I knew I had to do it. So I procrastinated for two months extra because I did not want to do it. So finally, I decided that this is the best thing for our organization, so I went ahead and did it. And still to this day, um, I have feelings about it, but I know it was the best thing in the long run for her because maybe she was not a good fit. And then this way I could release her to allow her to find other things that she was probably better at. So leaders must also find success through failures, turning stumbling stones into stepping stones, rezoning their life for elevation. If you are a leader, if you're going to become a leader, you are gonna have many failures along the way. No one is perfect. We, we don't get it right on the first time, sometimes second, third, fourth time. But how we do get it right is by those stumbling stones, 
learning along the way and our failures. Now we're gonna go into effective communication. So we just talked about leadership. We talked about some of the steps of leadership. So now we're gonna talk about communication, which they go hand in hand. So what is communication to you? You can put it in a chat box. We can discuss it later when the presentation is over. How do you see yourself communicating with others? And are you getting your point across in an effective manner? I wanna to read to you a quote from Tony Robbins. Some of you may know him, but he is a huge global motivational speaker here in the States. He said, to effectively communicate, we must realize that we are all different in the way we perceive the world and use this understanding as a guide to our communication with others. Think about that, that's a powerful statement to effectively communicate, which is saying that we all do not talk the same, we do not listen the same, and we do not understand what we say to one another the same. So as that, we perceive the world as, of course you understand what I'm saying, but that's not necessarily true. So to be a guide to communicate with one another or the world is something that we all must learn to be effective communicators. The power of words. I am a very spiritual person. I believe in the power of words. Words are very strong. Words have the potential to bring life or death to the hearts of others. Along with underlining attitudes, your words will either build others up or tear others down. They have the potential to strengthen or even weaken the faith of others. As you evaluate the way you use your words, remember you will be held accountable for every careless word you say to others. Oftentimes I will meet women along my path because we are a women's organization and I will listen to them talk sometimes maybe about themselves, about their business, and they may say, oh, well, I'm not as successful as so-and-so. Oh, my business is not doing as well as so-and-so. Oh, I wish I was further along than where I am now. Oh, this, oh, that. I remind them, you have to speak life into your life, over your life, and into the universe. Because words have power. The, man, the, the art of manifestation, which I am a huge believer in, what you say and what you put out in the universe is what comes back to you. You create that vibration. So if it's negative, of course, negativity is going to come back to you. If it's positive, of course, again, positivity is going to come back to you. But it comes back to you in a different way. Because each time you throw that positivity out there, you get it back twofold, sometimes threefold. So be careful with your words. Even when you're talking to people and you're interacting, we all get excited, we get upset sometimes, we say things that we don't mean. But once they come out of our mouths, we can't take it back because it's already out there. So moving forward in your life, whatever you decide to do, just remember. When you are talking, be mindful of what you're saying. And if you're angry, take a few minutes, you know, meditate for a couple of minutes, take some deep breaths, step away. Um, sometimes I know that we get upset when we're sending an email maybe, or we're making a phone call. So we're in that moment and we're in the heat of that moment. But then once that moment is gone, you won't remember that ever again. So just think. Five years from now, will you remember what you said today, whether it was good or kind? Probably not. What is communication? So let's break that down first. So communications dealing with relationships is a process of verbal and nonverbal interactions with others in which thoughts and feelings are shared and understood. 
That is the receiver of the communication hears what is said and understands what is meant by the sender. A lot of times, and sometimes I do it with my husband, when you're talking, sometimes you're not listening because you're, li you're listening to the person, but do you really hear the person? And what I mean by that is sometimes when we're talking or when others are talking to us, we're not listening to what they're saying. We're thinking about what we're going to say back to them. So the whole time they're talking to us, we're strategizing in our mind. And I'm not saying that everyone does it, but a lot of people do. And I know I'm one of them. You'll sit there and you'll listen to the person. But now I'm thinking about, okay, well, as soon as they're done, I'm going to say my part. So maybe what they said and what I heard were two different things. So that's why communication is so important, especially listening. There's two forms of communication. You have your verbal and you have your nonverbal. So when we talk about verbal communication, that might be how you feel, the spoken word, or you can have both choices of words or a tone of voice. Now, I love texting, but I'm old fashioned. I'd like to get on the phone and actually talk to someone. Because on the phone, you can hear the tone, you can talk to the person, whereas a text, it's hard to convey in a text your feelings. When you're upset, you might have all capitals. When you're excited, you might have all capital letters. Um, you know, somebody might look at that text and be like, well, were you upset with me because it's all capitals? I didn't understand what you said. So that's why I like to actually talk to someone and not only by telephone, face to face, because this way you can see their body gesture. You can see if they're really paying attention to you. If they're looking at you, then you can get a sense of your communication with that person. So now we can go on to the nonverbal communication, which expresses your thoughts and feelings without words. That might be your facial expression. Like I have some examples here, your body posture. Have you ever noticed sometimes when you're talking to people and they might have their arms folded like this while you're talking? Well, think about it. How does that make you feel? It does it make you feel like that person doesn't want you to talk to them. They're very standoffish. You're invading their space. You know, body posture. Are they leaning forward? Are they leaning back from you? Um, hand gestures. You have a lot of people that might talk with their hands. That's the way they express themselves. Direct or indirect contact. Me personally, when I am talking to someone, I like to look directly into their face, into their eyes. This way I am letting them know I am here, I am present, I am in the moment, and you have my attention right now. A gentle or rough touch, style of dress and clothing. You know, we all express ourselves by the way that we dress. Are we dressing to express our freedom? Are we dressing to conform to the way that we should dress or the way that someone thinks that we should dress? These are all nonverbal communications. Are we apathetic? Do we have silent responses? You know, so you have to think of when you're doing nonverbal, especially if you're not a verbal person, what are you saying when you are talking to another person? What is the message that you are betraying to them? We're gonna go over the six components of communication. The first one is what the speaker wants to communicate. So that's important. And we're gonna to touch on all of these. I'm gonna go through them and then we're gonna to touch on them. What the speaker says, how the speaker says it, and what physical gestures accompany it. What the speaker believes is being communicated. What the hearer wants to expect to hear. What the hearer hears and sees. What the hearer believes is being communicated. So all too, all too often we say, it's not what others hear. 
if the first and the last components that I talked about, which are what the speaker wants to communicate and what the hearer believes is being communicated are not matched up, then you have a problem in miscommunication. Okay, so lots of times when I'm, I'll use my husband because, you know, we talk a lot, but um, sometimes when him and I are speaking, especially if it's something that we are disagreeing on, the first thing I will say to him is, what did you hear me say to you? Because that's important. He might say, well, this is what I heard you say. And I will be like, well, no, that's not what I said. This is, let me explain a little bit more of what I said. So when the speaker wants to communicate, it's very important that you are communicating your thoughts and your ideas correctly so that when the hearer hears it, they can even repeat it back. So sometimes I'll say that if someone is speaking to me, I'll be like, okay, so just for clarification, let me repeat back to you what I heard. It gives that person the opportunity for me to tell them what I thought they said to me. And then they can let me know, no, Felicia, that's not what I said. Or yes, Felicia, that's correct. That's exactly what I said. So you might want to practice that in your everyday life. When you are talking to someone, you want to make sure that definitely your message is being understood one and that they can hear exactly what it is that you're saying. And this way you will be on the path to becoming a better and effective communicator. Basic guidelines for effective communication. So let's start with, there's two ways of communication that has essential characteristics. We have the warmth communication, conveying acceptance and courtesy. So what does warm says? Warm says, you are important to me. You are, are valuable to me and I enjoy and respect you. I will try not to make a carbon copy of myself, but rather I desire that you fully realize your own potential or greatness. Then we have genuineness, having no hidden agendas. So genuineness says, I am not trying to manipulate you, nor am I trying to bend you to my will. I want to make it safe for you to communicate with me and safe for you to trust that I will be truthful with you. Then we have empathy, putting yourself in someone else's circumstances walking in another's shoes. So empathy says, while I may not know exactly what you are going through, I'm trying to understand the emotions you feel and the challenges you face. I am seeking to understand you rather than trying to make you understand me. You see how that's broken down? That's effective communication, conveying that warmth, being your authentic self. We can't be no one else but our authentic self. And empathy, being a leader and communication, you have to have empathy. You always have to put yourself in the place of someone else. I remember when I was in middle school and I was growing up, I'm originally from New York City. I grew up in Queens, New York. And there was a young woman who would come to school and the children would pick on her all the time. They would pick on her because one, uh, she would come to school, maybe her clothes wasn't always clean or maybe she didn't have lunch or her hair wasn't maybe as kept as most there, but they would pick on her all, all the time because she was different. When in reality, she was not different. Her home environment was different. You know, maybe she didn't come from the best home. Maybe she didn't come from the best family. We don't know what their circumstances was. But one of the things that I remember our teacher telling us about was to be empathetic on our journey, wherever it carries us in life. We must always think of walking in another person's shoes. 
And that will help us be much more kinder on our journey. Now let's put it all together. We, we talked about leadership. We talked about communication. Now let's see how the two come together. To be an effective leader, you must be first good at communicating your thoughts and ideas. Well, we talked about that. How important is that? People cannot read your mind. So they don't know what you're thinking. They don't know what your thoughts are especially if they are a boss, a professor, a political figure, even your president. You don't know what is happening or what's gonna be said until they convey to you their thoughts and their ideas. Be your authentic self and you can never go wrong. People wanna to connect to you. They wanna know that you're a real person. They wanna know that they can talk to you. They want to know that you are approachable they want to know, hey, this woman, this man is just like me. The only difference is they might have a different job. They might be doing something differently, but they are just like me. Be compassionate and express interest in those you are leading. Show that you care. You know, just don't be a leader and give orders and tell this person, do this, do that. And they never see you. They never talk to you. Talk to those that you are leading. Show them that you care. Show them that you are interested in their welfare, their family, their life, so they can help them to become successful. Love, listen, and leverage who you are as a leader. People know when you're faking it. When they, they know when you're not giving 100% of yourself, they can feel that. But if you're genuine, if you're authentic about what it is that you do, you always end up with better results. Admit that you were flawed and don't always get it right. No one is perfect. We all have flaws, whatever they are. Whether it's speaking, it might be reading, it might be writing, it might be even talking to a university like I'm talking to today or talking to a professor or another business person. Be open to new ideas and suggestions. Don't take the stance of it's my way or highway. Be open to having people come to you and say, hey, I like what you're doing. What have you ever thought about doing it this way? Or have you thought about doing it that way? Don't get into that, that place of, well, I'm the leader, I'm the boss. So you have to do what I say and that's it. Because if that happens, guess what? You're gonna lose a lot of good people along the way. And that you do not want to do because it's harder to find good at people than it is getting bad people on your team. So let others see how committed you are in your role of leadership. One thing that I do, I have, my group has a private Facebook page. And then I have a page for my memberships, for my members. One thing that I do every day is I go into that group page. I make sure I'm saying something, whether it's something positive, I'm letting them know about resources in their business, or I'm trying to get them engaged, or I'm just saying hello. And the reason why I do that is I don't want them to think, hey, I just put this group up. They never see me in the group. They never see me posting anything in the group. And I'm not giving them resources or showing them that I care, which I do as far as helping their business or anything like that. So make sure again, that you're committed, you are staying in the moment. Never lose sight of the end result, the goal. Always have a goal, always look to attain and reach that goal and work towards that goal. Whether it's you, your team, whoever, Make sure you have a goal in mind and never lose sight of that. You know, if you find yourself losing sight of the ultimate goal, then go back and revisit your why. Why are you doing this? Whatever it is that you're doing, is it making you happy? Is it making others happy? Do you see an end result in the end? 
Always stay true to yourself and never compromise for the sake of others, approval of you. Like we said, not everyone is going to like you and that's okay. Because sometimes we get so caught up in trying to please others that we forget about ourselves. So what is the sense of pleasing others and we're not happy with ourselves? We have to show that we love ourselves first. We are pleasing to ourselves first before we can portray that to anyone else. And again, it goes back to the authenticity. People know when you're not being true to yourself and definitely to them. Now, I want you all to go and be the best communicators and leaders that you were meant to be. I wanna leave you with this quote, Maya Angelou, who is one of the, oh, she's a famous poet. She said, I learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Think about that. Five years from now, you might forget that I came to you and I did this presentation. You might even forget, maybe I might've did something or said something. But one thing you will never forget is how I made you feel. Was there something in my presentation that I said to you personally that made you think, am I being an effective communicator? Am I being an effective leader? Do I care about my people? Do I care about what I'm doing? So thank you. I want to say thank you to the School of Education, to Adamus University and Dr. Mercati again for the honor to come before you and present this presentation to you. That is my contact information there. That is also our website. So if you have the opportunity, please go on to our website so you can learn more about our organization, which is the PWNC Foundation and also the Philadelphia Women's Network Connection. See what we do in the community. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was indeed our pleasure to have heard you speak today. Uh, now I would request our participants to uh, like if you have any questions for ma'am or if you want to raise a conversation with ma'am, then please uh, comment your questions to the chat box. Let or you may stop. just raise your hand. Wow, we have a lot of people in the room. This is exciting. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, okay, are we don't any? see, uh, yeah, there aren't any questions there, but uh, before that, I would like to uh, mention to you, ma'am, a few takeaways that I shall be taking home today uh, after your okay. session. Those are that uh, leaders are, you know, uh, it's inevitable for leaders to face conflict, but that they should uh, stay headstrong and they should have a strong foundation of ethics and integrity. Um, they must not, uh, uh, they should know to alleviate and communicate their anger such that uh, it does not impact them negatively. And it is very important for us to keep a checklist of burnouts so that, uh, you know, we can uh, moderate and um, take care of our, men of our own mental health. And it is very important um, for us to not lose hope and uh, rather, you know, turn the stumble stones into stepping stones as you have put in, in your slide. And uh, that statement of uh, Tony Robbins on effective communication is something which shall surely leave an indelible mark in all of our minds. Uh, and how you talked about the power and potential of words, it made me remember uh, a phrase which we, you know, we often used to hear as kids that words once uttered, they don't come back. So we need to pay for the repercussions of whatever we have uttered. Um, then you have talked about warmth, compassion, genuineness, and empathy, which are uh, basic, essential prerequisites for effective communication. 
because uh, people can you know catch up with your vibes and they'll know when you are making up or faking for things and when you're not being authentic with them so we we can easily get caught at that instance uh, and most importantly the moment uh, one starts to realize that you know i'm the boss i'm invincible and i'm the face uh, it becomes very difficult because you start to lose good company people start to you know go away from you so that thing needs to be checked like whenever that instinct comes to our mind we need to tell ourselves that okay fine now i need to keep a check on my temper and my behavior and it is very important to never lose sight uh, of the goal and uh, strive persistently with a positive approach until and unless it is reached and uh, how you concluded with maya angelou's uh, oft quoted phrase where you know people will never forget uh, how you made them feel it is actually very relatable and thank you so much ma'am for your deliverance it indeed means a lot to all of us thank you once again on behalf of school of education at amas university you're wonderful you're wonderful it, you took some great notes <laughs> you took some great notes and i'm glad that a lot of the things that i said meant um a lot to you because like i said a lot of times we as leaders when we're talking we assume that everyone understands us and that everyone knows what we're talking about so it's so important to be mindful that when you are talking to people that they're actually hearing what you're saying you know we live in a world where there are so many outside stimulus there's so many things going on we have you know we have the the cell phone we have the ipad we have computers we have this we have that you know it's so easily to get caught up in that world and it's almost like a fast fix when i was growing up because i'm older than probably most of you when i was growing up um we didn't have electronics or anything at the table with my family we would sit at the table with my family we would talk to our my mother we would talk to our father they would ask us about their our day uh if it was our friends they would ask about our friends their family and different things like that we have now we're living in a world now with the generation x generation z's uh millennials that they want things quickly you have tiktok you have instagram you have reels you have facebook there's so much stimulation outside that we forget we're all human beings we need to talk to one another we need to interact with one another it's so important and it's important as human beings especially women when we are conveying our messages that people understand what it is that we are saying so i if if i leave everyone with nothing today I want you to remember that in order to be effective whether you are a leader or anything in your life communication is key one thing that the world cannot take from you is education I walked into some places to work where no one looked like me at all but it was because of my education and my communication that i was able to persevere and be successful so i hope that you will leave with that message today absolutely ma'am absolutely thank you so much ma'am uh, with this we have reached reached to the end of our session today i would like to thank professor samitre chancellor at amas university dr dipendra kumar jha vice chancellor at amas university our convener Dr. Shauli Mukherjee, Director, School of Education, Adamas University, and finally our coordinator, Dr. Pragya Mohanty, Associate Professor, School of Education, Adamas University, for their humble efforts, assistance, and supervision. I would also thank the dignitaries and each and every attendee for being a part of today's session and making it a success. Uh, it it was an absolute pleasure to have heard to you, Ms. Shankan. Thank you so much once again. and i hope all of you will have a great day thank you thank you for sorry and you were a great host thank you everyone enjoy the rest of your day thank you very much ma'am
and with you're all, welcome with all your permission i am ending this session now oh, thank you okay. thank you you're welcome bye bye bye